Yes, God. Is real. Say so it's real in, you know, and you get personal with it, my soul. For I can feel the change. And it's not the old feeling that have come about throughout the course of my life, but it is a new feeling and it's deep within. The other is just an effectuation surface wise, but this is deep. That's why I know that God is real. Let's bow our heads in a word of prayer. Most gracious and heavenly Father, we come with a heart full of praise and thanks for your many wonderful blessings, great and small, and for realizing and knowing that you are of a truth, a reality. We thank you, Father, for your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, who came to benefit the world, to be salvation to whomsoever believeth and will confess that they might be delivered from the pits of hell. Father, we thank you for this day and for each and every individual that have pressed their way into your house today and for those that are in tune that you might feed us with the wisdom, the knowledge and the understanding that we may not sputter nor be confused, but we have a perfect understanding of the commandments, the reality of serving a true and a living God. Father, remember the world in its entirety, them that are less fortunate than we are. Have mercy upon us all. Watch over, protect us, lead, guide, and direct into all truth and righteousness. In the name of Jesus Christ, we do ask and we do thank thee both now and forevermore. Together can we all say, Amen. Amen. Give an honor to God and to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to the ministers of the gospel, the deacons that are assembled to the congregation, and our visiting friends from Maryland. We say good afternoon, and may God bless you. It is truly a blessing to be in God's house once again, the place where God's honor doth dwell. And for each and every one of you pressing today, on this gorgeous day that God has blessed us with, the beauty of the Lord is all around us. Can't you see it? Do you feel it? God is real. Amen. So we thank God indeed for the scroll which reads obedience, love, reverence, and then respect. First to God, then to leadership, and then to one another. We thank God for the sparks from the anvil on page three of our programs today. The first one says, the world thinks a lot of you while you are going up. But when you start down, it runs out on you. It's interesting. It says the world now thinks a lot of you. And then the Lord tells us to love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Because these are the things that worldly folks do. As long as you can benefit them, they'll hang right next to you. But when you begin to sparrow downward, they have no longer any use you. They're not like Jesus. Amen. When you're down, he'll reach down to pick you up. And while you're up, he'll encourage you to stay up. That's God. 
But the world, amen, they only think of you when you can benefit them. But when your funds run a little short, they tend not to want to be associated with you. That's the world. The second one says, you are not safe on ice. I don't care how well you can skate. Amen. Ice is slippery. You watch the Olympics at times and you see those professional skaters hit the ice. And they're supposed to be professionals. So it doesn't matter how well you can maneuver. Sooner or later, you're going to slip. Sooner or later, you're going to fall. And then it's going to take the almighty God to pick you back up. Amen. Third one says, regardless of what a righteous person does, his aim is godly. You know, you ask the question, why in the world did he do that? You question it because you don't understand it. But then as time go on, you say, oh, now I see. He had a righteous plan. Same thing with Jesus when he came, amen. They couldn't understand him. They despised him, they rejected him. But he had a righteous intention to benefit the souls of mankind. So regardless of what a righteous person does, his aim is godly. Amen? And on the back of your program, it says, when a person comes to God, there must be a willingness on their part to be transformed from the oldness of ways to the newness of life, which is in Jesus Christ who is the savior of the soul, enabling them to prove what is good and acceptable to God. Selah. Amen. What is that good and perfect will of God when Christ came to benefit us all? Truly, we thank God for all things in Christ Jesus, trials, tribulations, sufferings, persecutions, Thank God for saving me one day and for giving me the mind, the desire, the determination to press on board. Thank God for Elder Life of Solomon Mishore and his companion, two beautiful people whom God fixed up with his word one day, sent them into the world and they preached and taught the gospel how to get out of sin and then stay out. Why go back to the mess? Amen. When you've been washed and made clean, why go back to the mess? Amen. It ain't worth it. Once you have been with God, you're with the best. There's no need to mess with the rest. Amen. Because God is the best. Everything that you need, he can supply you with it. Health, strength, food, shelter, as the sister Christa said, he's my provider. Amen. Until he's done something for you to that degree, you can't have that testimony. But one thing is of a certainty, church, he is our source of existence today. If you are alive, it came from God. If you have clothes on your back, it came from God. Amen. You check it out. It's silk, it's cotton or whatever. Where does cotton come from? The earth. Amen. Who controls it all? God Almighty. So truly, we thank God. I thank God for what he has done, doing his plans to do, and for each and every one of you pressing your way out today. We want to speak to you about self-examination. Amen. Self-examination today. It is important that we all look at ourselves. And, and you know, we have what we call mirrors, amen. We all have mirrors. Some of the women have them in their pocketbooks, amen. They want to make sure that they look presentable. You want to self-examine yourself. 
Amen. And we do so by looking into the perfect law of liberty. From Genesis to Revelation. There are some that just want the New Testament, and then there's others who just want the Old Testament, but God has commanded us to look at the Word of God from the very beginning to the very end. And we are to take the Word of God and apply it to our lives. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Amen. In the very beginning, God created heaven and earth. And so we as individuals must self-examine day in and day out. And as we read the word of God, we apply it to our lives. When we see something that ought not so to be, then we take it out and then ask God to strengthen us. Amen. So we want to speak to you today about self-examination. When we talk about self, we're talking about one's consciousness of one's own being or identity. And we do that physically by looking in the mirror. Let's see how I look. And you turn and you examine yourself because it's always more acceptable when you examine yourself than somebody else say, oh, you got a string that's hanging. And you, 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 when you look, there's this big, long string hanging down behind you, and you say, it, it's so embarrassing. If I had it just self-checked myself. Amen. So you must be conscious of your identity. Never associate with people that you have to hide your identity as a saint. How we doing, church? Self-examination. Examination is the act of examining or the state of being examined. When we preach the gospel, the gospel is designed to get into your personal business is to get you to check yourself. And as the word of God comes forth, we take it with the willingness to obey it to the letter. You don't pick and choose like some kids are uh, picky eaters, amen. You don't pick and choose when it comes to this. You eat ye all of it. You know, back in the olden days when grandma put food on your table and on the plate, you didn't pick and choose. You ate what grandma put on the table. And you didn't have no questions about it. But today kids are spoiled. You know, they want to eat all the sweets and leave the vegetables. Amen. But eat ye Not some, but all of it. Amen? The word self-examination is an introspective consideration of one's own thoughts and emotion. Amen. Introspect is to engage in introspection. Introspection is the contemplating of one's own thoughts. You sit down and you think about it. Some contemplate evil and others contemplate what's good. But that's the introspect of one's thoughts, their feelings, and their sensation. Consideration is careful thought. Amen. As Paul said, consider what I say, and then the Lord will give you understanding in all things. Consider. Give it some consideration. Serious thought. When these words are placed here, they're not just placed here to be hung here. 
They're here to keep you reminded of what God has commanded to be obedient, to love, to reverence, and then respect. And you can't have one without the other. Amen. So if you're running a little short on love, just try obeying. Amen. And you can't obey until you love. And you find out that God is love, and with God in as the main ingredient, there's no problem with obedience. Amen. And you have to reverence him because he's the great I am. Amen. And respect him, oh yes, because he is the almighty. So we're talking about self-examination. <clears throat> and when you look at consideration, it says deliberation. Deliberation is thoughtfulness in decision. When you're making a decision, you want to be very thoughtful of the direction that you want to take. And if you're doubtful, then in the multitude of counselors, their safety. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So let me run this by you. When I was looking at establishing a company, I was trying to figure out how I was going to structure it tax-wise. Uh, tax and so I just so happened to be with a group of lawyers that went down to the shipyard and they were having a conference. So as a bus driver, they just invited me in and God was placing me in that position right then to gather important information. Now here's how it works. I asked one lawyer, I said, listen, I said, if you were going to start a company, how would you structure it? He said, as a small business starting off, subchapter S. So I'll leave this lawyer and I'll go over to another lawyer, and I say, well, what do you think of a subchapter S? Well, if I mention subchapter S to him, he figures I know something, so he will feed me some more information. Interesting. God will teach you all things. So if you want to know something, you ask God, who give it to all men, what, liberally, and upbraid if not. And then you consider what he says. And knowing who he is, you have the reverence and respect for him in his position. He's the almighty God. And he's not going to tell me anything that's going to hurt, harm, or destroy me. So I respect God to the highest. Amen? So listen, you consider and then when you think of the word thought, it is described as the faculty of thinking and reasoning. Amen. Let me see what's going to happen to this plant if I break this leaf off. Will it hurt it? Will it harm it? Will it make it look unseemly? And if it's going to make it look unseemly, I prefer not to break it. Off. That's reasoning. And before I did that, I gave it some serious thought. So this is what we must do in our everyday walk with God. Self-examination. How are we doing, church? Amen. Digging, if you will, congregation. Turn with me to the book of uh, 2 Corinthians. <clears throat> The 13th chapter. <clears throat> I want to begin right there at the very first verse. This is the Apostle Paul speaking to the Corinthian church. He says, this is the third time I am coming to you. In the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be Established. Amen. 
Read. I told you before. I've told you before and foretell you as if I were present that second time and being absent now I write to them which heretofore have what? Sin. Amen. See, there were some problems in the Corinthian church. And Paul, being the apostle that he was, had to deal with these sinful acts that was taking place within the church. Amen. You know, I, I tell people oftentimes some of the worst people to deal with in business is church folks. Amen. They scheme. You, you, ever, you ever seen or watched that, uh, what was that show where... Um, Moving on up, what was his name? Dig and Fry. You ever watch that show, Dig and Fry? They had to take him off. You know why? Because they were really exposing church folks. And all the scheming that that Dig and Fry did behind the scenes, it was a reality. They do a lot of scheming and unfit things that happen behind closed door with church folks. If you notice today, there's a lot of new rules and regulations coming out governing churches. Because they are finding that there's a lot of isms and schisms within the churches. When the Japanese students came in the 90s and they had to go around and examine and visit all the churches they came back with this opinion of the Catholic Church that it was full of adultery. And since that discovery, you see what is happening in the Catholic Church. Priests and nuns and things of this nature that have been going on and homosexuality and all of this stuff is being now brought out among the Catholic Church. So a lot of things have changed today as far as the laws is concerned because of a lot of isms and schisms. And Paul says the second time, the third time, amen, and being absent now, I write unto them which heretofore have sinned, and to all others, that if I come again, I what? And to all others, that if I come again, I will not spare. He says, I will not spare. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You've heard the saying, three strikes, you out. Amen. So listen, third verse says, since you seek a proof of Christ speaking in me, which to you, Lord, is not weak, but is mighty in you, for though he was what? Crucified through weakness. through weakness. The only way that Christ did die was that God had to withdraw himself from him. Because other than that, he could not and would not have died. Because you know he asked the question, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He did so that he might die. And if he had not died, we would still be in sin today. But now that he has died and resurrected from the dead, we have hope beyond the grave. Self-examination today. Read Yet he liveth by the power Yet of God. Yet he liveth by the power of God and what? <clears throat> but we also are weak in him. We are weak in him, but we live, shall live with him by the power of God. Read. Toward you. Toward you. Fifth verse says what? Examine yourself. Ah. You examine yourself. Don't be examining your brother. Don't be examining your sister, but examine you. He says, examine yourselves whether what? Ye be in the faith. Whether you be in the faith. Mm -hmm. Amen. As the elder told the brother, he says, well, how about you? Amen. 
They asked the question whether or not Adam made it to heaven. Elder said, if you get to heaven, if you get to heaven, and you don't see Adam, then you'll know. <laughs> People worry about the things that they ought not to worry about, and they forget to worry about what they need to worry about, and that is self. Your own identity. Listen, read. Examine yourselves, whether you be in the faith, do what? Prove your own selves. Prove your own selves. Read. Know ye not your own Know ye not your own selves. Read. How that Jesus Christ is in you. Is in you. Mm -hmm. Not in your brother, not in your sister, but in you. Examine yourself. Amen. Amen. Listen, turn with me to 1 Corinthians. <clears throat> except, you know, I think the latter part of that says, except you be reprobates, meaning void of understanding. Amen. <clears throat> 11th chapter. 1 Corinthians. Begin right at the 20. Third verse, this is speaking concerning the rules for divine worship. He's speaking about holy communion, the partaking of the body of Christ. We each are to examine ourselves and see where we stand. Amen. Amen. So look, the 23rd verse says, For I have received of the Lord that which also, what? I delivered, I delivered unto you that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, did what? Took bread. And what? And when he had given thanks. And when he had given thanks. You notice, it says, and when he had given thanks, when you sit down to eat, don't just sit down and start throwing down. Always give thanks. At the same day, the same time, it says, and when he had given thanks, he did what? He break it. He break it and said, take what? Eat. Eat what? This is my body. This is my body, read. Which is broken for you. Which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And after the same manner also he took the cup, and when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. Read. For as often as ye eat this bread and, and drink this cup, read. you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore what? Wherefore whosoever shall eat this bread and, and drink this cup of the Lord how? unworthily. Ah. Mm -hmm. unworthily. See, this is a serious moment that you as an individual is partaking of the body of Christ and that's why I don't see how people got it all mixed up that they use wine during this sacred service how can Christ support wine which destroys so many lives amen the fruit of the vine is grape juice. Amen. That's what they call it. Well, Jesus drank wine. You can't show me that in the book. He turned water into wine. Yeah, he turned water into the fruit of the juice. It was not with kick. Didn't have no kick to it. This wine that you're talking about moves in the cup. Amen. And all those little bubbles that's moving in the cup goes right to the top of your head. Listen, <clears throat> let's straighten out something here. Go to Proverbs. Amen. <clears throat> 20th chapter. Just hold what you got there. Because people are misunderstanding. 20th chapter, first verse says what? 
Wine is a marker. Say what? Wine is a marker. My wine is a marker. Mm -hmm. So Jesus is not a participant in anything that is a marker. Mm -hmm. Amen. Wine is a marker, and what else? Strong drink is raging. And strong drink is raging, and whosoever is deceived thereby is what? Is not wise. Amen. When have you ever seen a wise drunk man? Good question, man. You've never seen one. I've never seen a wise drunk man. They're always foolish. Amen. So whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. So I, I hope we've got that part straight, that it was not wine that Jesus turned the water into that is fermented. And I kind of studied up on it a little bit, and it takes a little while to ferment. So he turned the water into grape juice, the fruit of the vine. Amen. It didn't have no kick to it. Amen. And whatever God does, it's all right with me. Amen. Amen. Listen, back over in 1 Corinthians. So for as often as you drink, the 26 says, often as you eat this bread and drink of this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. 27 says what? Wherefore, well, whosoever eat this bread and, and drink this cup of the Lord, Unworthily shall be what guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. Huh. Mm. Twenty eighth said, but do what? But let a man examine himself. All right. Mm -hmm. Let a man examine himself. Mm -hmm. Amen. And then what? And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. You see, what you want to do is you want to give this some serious consideration. You want to deliberate now. He's told you that if you eat of this unworthily, then you are going to be responsible, guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. So I don't want to be guilty of the blood and the body. I don't want the blood of Christ on my hand. So I'm going to give this some serious thought when it comes down to partaking of the body of Christ. I'm going to examine myself. Listen, read. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily. But he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh what? Damnation to himself. Amen. Damnation to himself. Read. Not discerning the Lord's body. Not discerning. The Lord's body. You see, when you go about to do things, you must give it some thought. Let me evaluate this. What is Christ and how can Christ benefit me more so than the path I'm traveling in? The conclusion is eternal life. That's worth it. Eternal life with God. There is not another way that will lead you to eternal life as God will. Amen. The pathway of righteousness leads home. And after you consider this, then you look at yourself and say, now what does the word of God say about me? And what must I do to be saved? Amen. Amen. And upon evaluation, and you look at you, and you know, you know, people know themselves better than you ever think that you could. As I tell my sons all the time, whenever you're looking at marrying a woman, run her by your mother. Because a woman knows a woman better than a man ever will. Oh, I know who she is, yeah. Run her by your mother. Because a woman knows a woman. You, you hear him say, oh yeah, she ain't all that. Oh yeah, they'll size each other up. Y'all know what I'm talking about. They'll size each other up. 
See her come walking in and, yeah, she thinks she all that. She ain't all that. And he's strutting around and he thinks he's got a pearl. Amen. He's all proud. And then later on in life he finds out. Amen. Self-examination. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning. This is nothing to play with. When it comes down to salvation with God, it's nothing to play with. Your soul is at stake. And if you make one wrong move, you could get a dagger in your soul. Amen? Self-examination. Read. For this cause. For this cause, many are what? Weak. And weak. Sickly. Weak. Mm -hmm. You see, some people don't have that inner strength that they ought to have for failing to self examine themselves. Amen. They'll crawfish on you in a minute. You're depending on them to stand up. That's one thing that a woman wants to see in a man is that he will stand up and be a man. Or she may argue with you. She might disapprove of what you do, but she will respect you for being the man. But if you don't stand up, amen, a woman going to do what a woman's got to do that she feels as though is necessarily needed to do, provide for her family and to protect herself. She's going to do that. But what she wants to do is she wants to see the man stand up and be the man. Because that's what God has called the man to do, and that is to stand up and be the head. You know, it's sad to see a woman that has to be a head and a tail. Because the man has failed to do what he's supposed to do as the man. Amen? So if you examine yourself and see where you stand, amen, know you're not your own selves, how that Christ is in you. In you. And if you don't, then you are ending up being void of understanding. Amen. Read on, brother. For this cause, for this cause, many are weak and sickly among you. You know, it is sickening to see individuals not responding as they ought to. For instance, you put high tests in your automobile, you're looking for it to perform. And it's out there sput. And this is high test. Amen. Amen. Sometimes you got to go back to regular to get things to work right. So with all the gospel of Jesus Christ that is alive today, there shouldn't be any sputtering in your life. Weak and sickly among you, and many what? Sleep. Sleep. Amen. Read. But we should judge ourselves. Here's the key. If we should what? Judge ourselves. And when we talk about judge, we're talking about forming an opinion or an estimation after careful consideration. You say, now, if I put too much water in this plant, it's going to drown. And then I have failed as a caretaker of this plant. But if I just put just enough in there to wet the soil and keep it damp, then I judge it properly. And you see it all nice and green, sprouting up with new stripes coming out. So I can look at that and judge that the caretaker of this plant has done a good job. The results is the life of the plant. The same thing with you. If you are adapting to the gospel of Jesus Christ, I should see a smile on your face. Amen. I should see you paying your tithes and offerings. I should see you in church when you ought to be in church. Amen. 
I can judge that properly after consideration. I can come to a conclusion. That if I look on the records and I see that you haven't paid a tithe on offering in the whole year, then you are sputtering. And after consideration, I say, well, you need an injection. You know how some people need a, a shot? Amen. A booster shot. Weak and sickly. For if we would judge ourselves, you know, we look at ourselves and we say, this isn't right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then we make the adjustment mm -hmm. ourselves. Yeah. And if we do that, if we, listen to what it says, if we what, judge ourselves, then what? We should not be judged. Won't anybody else have to judge you if you take care of your own business? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Read. But when we are judged, but when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord. Don't get upset mm -hmm. when the gospel is preached and it just steps all over your toe. Don't get upset. God is chastening you. Mm -hmm. And whom he loved, he chastens. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh, I'm, I'm finished with this. I ain't going to take this no more. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. The Lord is chastening you. And here's the reason why. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord that we should what? I like not, this. I like this. Amen. That we should what? Not be condemned with the world. Amen. Now, isn't that love? That God would want to straighten you out before you end up in hell. He's trying to protect you from hell. So don't get huffy with him. Amen. 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 Back over in first, second Corinthians. If we can't finish up. Self-examination today. <clears throat> Check yourself out, church. And here's the perfect law of liberty. This is the mirror that we look into. 66 books. And it is loaded. As I said, it's a magnum. Amen. They talk about a 44 magnum is the most powerful handgun that is on the earth. But I say this here, the 66 Magnum. And it is loaded. Amen. It'll take you off your feet too. So listen, <clears throat> back over in 2 Corinthians, the 13th chapter. Right at the 11th verse says, finally what? Finally, brethren. And whenever you see brethren, he's speaking to all of us, male, female, whomever. Amen. Amen. So finally, brethren, what? Farewell. Farewell. What do eat? Be perfect. All right. <laughs> All right. yeah, it's in there. Isn't it in there? Perfect in righteousness. Perfect in tithes and offerings. Perfect in your life existence. Perfect in treating your wife as ought to be. Perfect in doing the things as a wife that you're supposed to to do. Perfect mm -hmm. in all points. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. People say, well, you can't live a perfect life. Ain't no man perfect. Well, you haven't read the Bible. This man was perfect, as he said of Job. This man was perfect and not only perfect, but upright. Because he stayed away from evil. Amen. Now, Jesus gave us a commandment in St. Matthews 5, 48. Be ye also perfect as your Father, which is in what? Heaven is perfect. So we are without excuse, and he wouldn't give us anything that we could not obtain. So it says, finally, brethren, farewell. Be perfect. Be what? Be of good comfort. Be of good comfort. Be of what? One mind. Amen. Husband and wives must dwell together with one mind. Church members must all come together with the same mind. As Paul said, that there may be no divisions among you, but that you might be perfectly joined together in the same mind and the same spirit. 
Amen. That's why we have the words up here, obedience, love, reverence, and respect. If everybody abides by this, you won't have no isms and schisms. But if you have isms and schisms, somebody is not being obedient. Somebody doesn't have love. They don't have a reverence. And they're definitely not respecting as they ought to. Amen. How are we doing? Pressing on. Finally, brethren, farewell. Be perfect. Be of good comfort. Be of one mind. Do what? Live in peace. You can't live in peace without love. You can't live in peace without obedience. You cannot live in peace without reverence. You cannot live in peace without respect. Amen. I love God, therefore I respect God. I respect him, I reverence him, and I show the reverence through obedience. You see how it all in and connects with one the other? Amen. So Jesus said, he that loveth me keepeth my commandments. Right. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings. Right. So don't tell me that you love God and you have a problem being obedient. Yeah. Self-examination. Amen. Read. And a God of love and peace says, live in peace, and the God of love and peace shall what? Shall be with you. God cannot be with you in the midst of turmoil that you have caused from failing to do what you ought to do. Amen? Read. Greet one another with a holy kiss. Greet one another with a holy kiss. Mm -hmm. Amen? People have, like Judas, Master. Because he had done told the individual whom I kiss, it is he. Take him. Come up to a master. But Paul said, greet one another with a holy, a righteous kiss. Read. All the saints salute you. All the saints salute you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost, what? Be with you all. How long? Be with you all. Be with you all. Amen says what? Let it be so. Amen. Everybody believe they heard the truth. Lord said you shall know the truth. And the truth shall what? Make you free. Free from what? Whatever's holding you. See, sometimes you got to get away from you to understand which way you must go next. Step back. Like I tell people, thank you, Digger. You can't see the directions that you're traveling when you're too close to things. Sometimes you gotta take a step back. You hear the sisters talk about a vacation. Amen. We all need to take a break from time to time. You know, when God created heaven and earth, and on the seventh day, what did he do? Did he rest? That's what the book says. And there is a rest to the people of God. But don't you rest until you find it. Amen. Just like if you're out there looking, you're in need for something, and you want to have something, don't rest until you find it. You keep right on working at it until you find it. You're in a hole and financially, don't be laying at home sleeping. Get up and go to work until you find it. Amen. Self-examination. May God bless you, church. Heaven ever smile upon you. Let us continue to hold on. Hold out. Look up. But don't give up because there is a happier day ahead. Hallelujah. When all the saints of God shall sing praise the Lord. Now, there is a happier day. But don't you be satisfied until you find it. Amen? Amen. Self-examination. Thank you. May God.